Hey, this is Tim with Big Green, and uh, today I wanted to talk about seeds. Uh, we're going to cover a few different topics of seeds, such as we're going to discuss the parts of a seed. Uh, next, we're actually going to talk about how plants are related, and seeds within a similar family often look kind of similar. And then the final topic will be um, germinating seeds. What do seeds need to grow? Um, and we'll actually touch on one more if we have time of some common seeds that we eat. So let, let's jump in. Okay, so let's jump in and look at the parts of a seed. When we're gonna start looking at the parts of a seed though, um, we need to know that seeds fall into two main categories. There's two different groupings of seeds. The first is over here, it's called a monocot. Um, the second one is a dicot. Mono means one, di means two, and cot, monocot, refers to this part of the seed, which is called the cotyledon. The cotyledon is uh, inside of the seed, and it's actually the first leaf that will emerge um, out from the seed when it germinates. Over here, um, in a dicot, that cotyledon contains the majority of the food that makes up the seed. So this diagram here is actually of a bean seed. And what I have right here is a, is a lima bean. A lima bean is a great seed to dissect and take a look at and explore the parts of a seed because it's so big. And what I'm doing right here, I've just soaked this seed overnight so it's nice and flexible and I can open it up. And what we can see here um, a lima bean is a great way to look at the parts of a seed. So right here we have the two cotyledon. That's here and here. Um, the seed coat is this outer skin here, this protective layer, which I can actually peel off of the seed. And then right here is the embryo. That's this guy right here. This is the baby plant. And when this seed germinates and begins to grow, this embryo will start growing and the leaves and roots will grow from there. All right, so now let's, let's take a look at these seeds uh, as they're organized by family. So on the left over here, we have the bean and pea family, also known as Fabaceae. Uh, and let's take a look at these seeds, beans, peas, fava beans, chickpeas, and even clover. When you get to know these seeds and start taking a look at them, you'll notice that even though they can vary a lot in size and shape and color, you'll just begin to see some similarities like uh, they all have this point on the end. You can always find a spot in the middle of these seeds that is uh, kind of the growth point where um, that embryo is going to emerge from. Um, over here in the lettuce family, uh, I'll just notice that the, the lettuce, sunflowers, zinnia, cosmos, and echinacea, they all are elongated with points on either end and striations. Now these aren't specific uh, specifically incredibly important aspects of these seeds, but you'll just start to begin to notice similarities between the seeds. Um, we were just talking about cotyledon a second ago, and I was pointing out a bean seed, and right here you can actually see the cotyledon, which are the first seeds that grew out of that bean. Cotyledon came out first, and they're actually drying up because they're not in use. The plant is now growing true leaves. All plants will, uh, will have these cotyledon, and within a certain family, all of the cotyledon will look pretty similar. So you can begin to recognize the cotyledon when seeds germinate in a family. You may not know exactly which variety, if it's a bean or a fava bean or a chickpea, but you'll start to see that the cotyledon looks similar throughout all of these plants. Since I've pointed it out, I'm just gonna mention that um, a great way to get to know your seeds is by germinating them. And these are root viewing cups. Um, what I've done here is planted seeds all along the edge of this cup. Um, all of these seeds are actually in the lettuce family. And uh, I can grow these seeds and start to see some of those similarities. This is a really fun activity um, for the classroom. And obviously you can do the same out in your garden. All right, so as I've just mentioned germination, um, and seeds sprouting, let's, let's talk about how seeds actually germinate and what they need. Um, all seeds really need to germinate is the right amount of moisture, um, so that includes water and air also. And then when they have that moisture content that they need, um, they'll begin to rehydrate, and then that, that embryo will start, start to grow. They'll grow roots and leaves, and the plant will emerge. And this will also only happen under the right temperature conditions, which is usually 
um, kind of warm and comfortable for people as well. In speaking about the cotyledon, again, germination is a great time to find out if your plant is a monocot or a dicot. I mentioned uh, these two seed leaves here, these two cotyledon that came out. Seeing those two cotyledon emerge means that you know that a bean is a dicot. If you saw only one cotyledon emerge right out of the gate, and here I have actually another cup that I have germinated full of monocots. Um, these are all different types of oats and grains, which are all monocots. You would just see one leaf emerge, and that would be a great indicator that you have just planted a monocot. So experiment with your own seeds in your own classroom, in your garden. Uh, try to figure out if your seeds are monocots, dicots, what parts are going to be edible when they grow. Speaking of, peas and beans are a great example of seeds you can eat, and there's a lot more out there. So ask yourself, ask your students what seeds you eat as well. That'll be a great, fun part of this process, learning about seeds in your classroom. Thanks so much.